Two of the biggest talking points in the telecom sector right now are the sustainability strategies of network operators and their partners and suppliers, and what will happen beyond 5G with 6G. So to find out more about these two topics and how they're related, I'm talking today with Marie-Paul Odini, Distinguished Technologist at Hewlett Packard Enterprises Communications Technology Group. So Marie-Paul, good to talk to you today. Um, what is the Next G Alliance and what are the objectives of the Green G Working Group? Well, the Next G Alliance um, is an ATIS initiative and it was launched in October 2020 uh, to really advance the North American mobile technology uh, leadership in 6G uh, and beyond over the next decade. Uh, the Next G Alliance will encompass the full life cycle, uh, starting with R&D, manufacturing, standardization, and market readiness. And there are different working groups. Um, the first ones have been the Roadmap Working Group and the Green G Working Group. And uh, it's interesting to see that uh, the Green G Working Group, uh, day one, was seen as a mandatory uh, working group to address uh, you know, all the challenge we have with uh, climate change. Uh, and the impact of the telecom industry, which is like 3% of the uh, global energy consumption, according to GSMA, and, and the growth of this impact, which is like three digit uh, until 2026. So there is really a, a need to do something. And this working group uh, has the mission to really reduce um, this impact, uh, especially for North America, but of course, influence the rest of the world. And so we'll start by uh, assessing what is the current environmental impact of the telecom industry, uh, starting with uh, 5G and, of course, evolving to 6G and beyond, in terms of, um, you know, again, the full cycle. So in terms of raw material, uh, energy, water consumption, uh, and the circular economy. A and then uh, trying to influence uh, all the other existing standards, influence industry to really um, reduce uh, this uh, environmental impact and to be able to set a new standard of uh, sustainable uh, communications. So lots of interesting developments there. Uh, do you think that the network operators are sensitive to these topics covered by the Green G Working Group? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, there are multiple drivers, actually. Um, there is a, a cost driver, first of all, uh, because, um, you know, the energy consumption is a big uh, budget uh, component for the operators. Um, there is also uh, the image, you know, that they give uh, to the consumers, which are more and more sensitive to sustainability. And of course, there is also regulation and uh, all the uh, kind of uh, industry um, uh, send, I mean, awareness and responsibility towards climate change. Uh, so since the Paris Agreement, for instance, the ambitious goal, you know, uh, to reduce, uh, um, I mean, the overall uh, temperature by 1.5 uh, degree, um, there is all this um, uh, type of organizations that have been put in place, uh, including, you know, the GSMA, and uh, all the uh, also uh, incentives and uh, uh, initiative from the European Commission, from ITU uh, and, and different organizations uh, to help operators uh, to uh, achieve uh, this, uh, what is called the science-based target um, of becoming carbon free, uh, carbon neutral by 2050 and to have intermediate goal of 2025. So lately, um, there are a number of operators, I think 35 operators, which represent like 30% of the mobile industry, which sign up uh, towards these goals. And they are starting to, I mean, they have started to implement a number of uh, initiatives uh, to achieve that. And, and so if you uh, check, you know, their programs, uh, some of them are quite aggressive uh, in terms of uh, switching to renewable energy, uh, trying to reduce uh, the number of, um, uh, raw material, you know, uh, which are in danger or hazardous materials and so on. Um, they are also uh, trying to implement, you know, all these new features that uh, 3GPP has introduced uh, to reduce uh, the energy consumption of the network. They are sourcing uh, energy efficient uh, equipment uh, as well. Uh, so they are doing uh, lots of things. They are monitoring, you know, how much water they consume and try to reduce that. 
uh, they're also working with their suppliers uh, to try to uh, align you know, suppliers ag against these uh, science-based uh, target uh, objectives and be uh, more sustainable. Uh, they educate uh, the subscribers as well on uh, trying to uh, be more responsible by uh, recycling their equipment, uh, by, uh, you know, be a bit more conscious of uh, the traffic that they generate uh, and the energy that they consume, uh, turn off their mobile or turn off applications. So all these uh, different examples that I've given earlier are being uh, relayed now by operators uh, with their subscribers uh, as well to, um, to try to have everybody, uh, you know, as a team to really work uh, against those, uh, those goals uh, to reduce the environmental impact. So are there any solutions available today that can help with these aims? Or do we need to wait for 6G or even beyond? There are definitely solutions available today uh, to reduce the environmental impact. Uh, there are solutions like uh, use renewable energy. There are already uh, suppliers for that. Um, and then also uh, use all the features that have been introduced in FreeGPP um, for 5G, uh, including some of the sleep mode uh, mechanism uh, to reduce the uh, energy of the RAN, but also the devices. And of course, uh, turning back your old phones uh, to your operators, which are recycling that. These are just a few examples, but there are many others uh, that some operators are already implementing. So yes, there are definitely things uh, that can be done today. 6G will just go beyond that and uh, still you know, improve the technology and look into uh, the full uh, life cycle and the circular economy across the whole industry. And how is HPE contributing to these developments? As an employee, I have the chance to work for a company that um, is quite advanced, has been one of the leading companies to take uh, action uh, against uh, climate change and, uh, and uh, energy consumption and environment and sustainability, uh, globally speaking. Um, we have committed uh, to become carbon neutral uh, by 2050 across the value chain, so including our suppliers. Uh, with an intermediate target uh, by 2025. And we are already uh, achieving that uh, in a few areas, but we are very aggressive uh, with that, uh, both in terms of the product that we supply, which are more and more efficient. Uh, we have been uh, reducing uh, the energy consumption of uh, our servers, uh, storage and networking uh, dramatically. Uh, and we are really on target for this uh, 2025 uh, Time frame. Uh, we are also sourcing 44% of our energy uh, from uh, renewable energy. And uh, also, we have uh, increased uh, dramatically um, the recyclability of our products. Uh, so, if you take you know, one of the flagship uh, servers, the ProLion DL uh, 380 version 10, it's already 98.5 uh, recyclable. Uh, so there are lots of things uh, which are being achieved uh, in HP. Uh, we got many awards and you have all the details in our living uh, report, uh, living progress report, uh, which is issued uh, annually. And the latest one just got uh, released and uh, it's pretty big, uh, thick. Uh, it's one in 12 pages, I believe. Uh, and so you will see all the details of what we do in terms of sustainability. Uh, so it's environment, but it's also uh, societal uh, uh, and responsibility. And, and you will see that, um, I mean, we are very active in many different areas uh, with the broader ecosystem uh, that we have uh, around HP. And what are you most excited about in terms of the ICT sector's potential to reduce its environmental footprint? Well, first of all, I'm very excited to see the NextG Alliance uh, Green G Working Group. Uh, because it's initiative from North America, so it means that North America is on board. And, uh, and having North America on board after the Paris Agreement and aligning to these targets and so on, I think is very good news. Uh, then second is the operators are on board as well. Um, I mean, as you see, you know, a number of them have signed up for this uh, target of reducing uh, carbon uh, uh, and be carbon neutral by 2050. Um, and so this is also very good news. Uh, this is the main industry uh, that is taking actions. 
as a whole uh, with suppliers and everybody and vendors. Um, and it's a, an industry that has an important impact as well. Uh, and then there are standards. Uh, I mean, 3GPP, of course, but uh, there are other standards as well, Etsy, uh, energy efficiency, uh, many other areas that are also taking uh, lots of actions to implement standards that will reduce uh, environmental impact, provide measures, and help the industry to implement these standards. So overall, very positive uh, signals that things are changing uh, to the best, because we need that. It's urgent, actually. Absolutely. This is a really important and fascinating topic. Marie Paul, thanks very much for talking to us today and sharing your insights. Thank you, Ray. Mm -hmm.